Welcome, Welcome to the Anderman Sarge Podcast, your number one source of entertainment. Hello and welcome to the Andrew Banzar Podcast. Today, we're going to review Han Solo, a Star Wars story. Wow, was I waiting for this since December of last year when I saw The Last Jedi? Oh, and actually, way back before when I first heard that a Han Solo story was going to be made, and I haven't still haven't seen The Last Jedi, but then I saw The Last Jedi and I was amazed. Now, with this Star Wars story, Han Solo one, you know, learning his backstory and how he came to be who he is and how we know him, was really fun and really great. And uh, I had a lot of, you know, analyzing throughout the whole film that I was like, wow, so this is how we did this and this is how we got this and this is how we go there and yada, yada, yada. And that was just amazing. But before I continue with this podcast and this review... I'll leave you with the synopsis, which I'll read right about now. Young Han Solo finds adventure when he joins a gang of galactic smugglers, including a 196 years old Wookiee named Chewbacca. In depth to the gangsters, Dryden Voss, the crew devises a daring plan to travel to the mining planet Castle to steal the batch of valuable Quaxium. In need of a fast ship, Solo meets Lando Calrissian, the swab owner of the perfect vessel of the dangerous mission, the Millennium Falcon. Alright, doesn't it sound interesting, that Han Solo Star Wars story film? Yes, it does sound interesting. But before we start, I want to give a good shout out to all the production crew where they work with the arts, the photography direction with the director itself, you know, the music, all the animations, because there was a bunch of CGI in this, and I really loved it. And before I continue, this Star Wars story, it's a bit different, because we're used to seeing more, you know, Jedi fightings, this this diplomacy kind of thing, you know, this the, the, the orders and, and Jedi, Sith, and all this good and bad, you know, rivalry. But in this Star Wars story, Han Solo film, we actually have a different point of view. It kind of felt like I was watching a mafia kind of thing film because we we get introduced into a bunch of smugglers, criminals, and that's how Han Solo starts. He starts by running away from his hometown and he becomes, you know, a smuggler, a criminal, you know, trying to get, you know, all the uh, stuff that they were asked to bring uh, and uh, it, it just baffles me the way that the Han Solo film it, it's different it, it, I felt so different watching this because it was more of a you know psychological criminal thing where you you had to like invest in the characters rather than in the other films it's more of a more actiony more diplomacy more darkness into it this is just more this is your character we're gonna develop your character we're gonna make this character however you know him and remember him and then we're just gonna build into that point where we met that character originally so i gotta say that this household film is it's, it's just great um throughout the film i i learned something from beckler Beckler taught us that you can't trust anybody because anyone at any moment at any second can betray you. doesn't matter how loyal they are to you. You are going to get betrayed at any sort of way, any form, any sign, and at any time. So you can't trust anyone. Even when Han Solo goes to that casino and he plays with Lando Carissian, with Lando, you know, Lando also made a fully trick with him because Lando, when he's playing the card game, he actually has a card hidden on his sleeves. And when we find out that he was doing that, we were like, oh, you cheater, you freaking cheater. But that's how the smugglers work. They work that way by by making you think you're going to get something, but in return, you get another thing. It's kind of like you're building up an irony 
to to the thing, you know, because it's it's what it's what a smuggler is all about. And I, I I was baffled when I when I well not just baffled, I was actually annoyed and mad that Lando had fo- played a foley trick on freaking Han Solo. How could you? That's not that's not right. But then again, a smuggler. What can we do? Anyways, then we find out that Lando first had the Millennium Falcon, and then. Throughout all the film, he Han Solo gets a hand to it, and and it, it was just you know interesting how we first meet the Millennium Falcon with Han Solo, but turns out Lando had the Millennium Falcon, and by smuggling and playing the card games, Han Solo actually ends up winning the Millennium Falcon. So kudos to that. But I noticed that. Going a little bit in detail with, you know, in broad with all the films of Star Wars, there's always a funny droid on the film. Here we had L3. L3 was really hilarious. She's like a, like a comic relief, more more of a thing. Just like C-3PO, just like um, R2-D2, and the one from Rogue One. All those robots and droids are actually a comic relief kind of thing, and it's kind of like a, a detail that needs to be featured on every film of Star Wars. No matter what are we looking at, what are we portraying, what are we doing, or who are we talking about, there's always going to be a comic relief with a droid. And honestly, I don't really mind because I like it. Even though one of the films, which is when Jar Jar Binks appears, he's the comic relief, relief there, and he's not a droid. But... In general, in general, you know, speaking, we always have a comic relief character, and most of the time, it's a droid. You can't, you can't deny that at any sort of way. It's always a droid, and I like it. I actually like it. I'm not gonna argue with that. I like it. All right, it makes me feel like all the tension that's happening, like the robot comes in, the droid says something, and blah, it's all gone all the tension is gone and i like it and i have a giggle a laugh and it just gets me out from that tension and i really like it and i like i really like how l3 and in some way i didn't like it because i felt bad for lando losing l3 but having the idea that they took her brain out and they installed it on the millennium falcon wow it, it, it brings out this idea of GPS as we know it nowadays. GPS. And isn't that like amazing? Star Wars always either is with the technology that's going to happen or foretold the technology that's going to happen eventually. And I really like it because it gives you an idea of the near future. Because let's be honest here, future isn't. 20 or 30 or 40 years later it's actually every second every second you pass every second that goes by it's a new future a new beginning and it's kind of ironic in star wars like my dad said everything is so futuristic and so way into the future But since the Star Wars stories always start with a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, it makes you go kind of primitive, but maybe for us humans in the real world, we don't know about all that technology that they have, but in our minds, all that things actually exist, and Lucas actually brought them to life many 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 years ago and since it's a long long time ago in a galaxy far far away they're actually primitive for their sense and their universe and their timeline but they're actually using technology that is actually way superior to us the real world the humans the ones that are expecting and watching and enjoying a star wars film and that is actually good and to finish off this episode, uh, I can say that the film was actually really good. It gives you a good idea of how Han Solo came to be. From a, from a, a smuggler to a criminal 
to again a smuggler, and then, boom, we got Han Solo, and we got this 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 guy that knows a lot about piloting. We know that he was. We, this one actually got me. This one actually got me. He actually became part of the you know the Empire. He actually was a pilot for the Empire. And that actually got me, what? Han Solo? A pilot for the Empire? So that's how he learned how to pilot all those ships? Well, that's interesting. Yeah. And this one, you know, spoiler alert, warning. Spoiler alert. When we finish the whole film and everyone has betrayed each other and all the plot has been resolved and all that stuff, yada, 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 yada. The girl that was with Han Solo, Kwai, Queer, Kwai, I, I keep messing up the name, but, you know, the thing is that when she puts in the ring from Vaz, we see Darth Maul. Wow. One of my favorite characters of all time. And honestly, I was not expecting Darth Maul to be the head, the boss, the one that we're, we're talking about to be aware of, to not mess up with, to not screw up with, because he's the head, he's the top of the pyramid. So it kind of got me off guard that he was the one on top, and I'm actually quite happy because I love that guy. When I was watching the film and she puts the ring, twists the ring, and then pff, the, the, the communicator pops in and Darth Maul's there, I actually was sitting so relaxed and then I was like whoa it got me into the edge of my seat I was like wait a minute no way no way that's actually pretty good and I came out of the film super satisfied it was a bit more than what I was expecting and I am super happy but this is the end of the episode that's all the time I got for today and for now so I'll catch you on the flip side Adios, amigos, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to click the bell to get notified. Super important. And don't forget to follow me on every social network as Andrew Van Stark. Now, for reals now, adios, amigos. You are listening to the Andrew Van Stark Podcast, your number one source of entertainment. entertainment.